Coming up on New England Ski Journal, it's been a long wait, but ski season is finally here. We will get caught up on the many changes you can expect to find at the mountain this year and check in with two of New England's favorite resorts, Waterville Valley and Sunday River. Been cooped up at home all year? Well, winter has finally arrived, and here at New England Ski Journal, we have you covered. And just to get you ready, here's a little something to get you tuned up to hit the slopes. I can't wait to get out on those slopes again. Hello everyone, I'm Meredith Gorman, your host of New England Ski Journal. It's been a longer wait than usual for this year's ski season. In March, the pandemic brought an abrupt halt to skiing and snowboarding as the resorts were forced to shut down for safety. But that also allowed the ski areas time to prepare for what they hope will be a safe and fun new season of skiing across New England. Let's take a quick look at what's new this year. And we start at Bretton Woods, where the 16,000 square foot Rosebrook Lodge is now open. Located at the summit and accessed via the Bretton Woods Skyway Gondola, the new Rosebrook Lodge offers stunning panoramic views of Mount Washington and the entire Presidential Range. The new event center also comes with a variety of dine-in and grab-and-go options. On to Maine, where Saddleback Mountain, under new ownership, is ready to open for the first time in a half decade. Among the new developments to look out for at the Maine Resort this season will be a high-speed detachable quad chairlift and a remodeled base lodge. All ski resorts have instituted several new protocols due to COVID-19. You can expect to be wearing masks, booting up at your car, social distancing on chairlifts, food trucks and stands, outdoor ticket kiosks, and special online ordering. Even the tickets for the Tubing and Mountain Adventure Park at Cranmore will be sold only online in two-hour time blocks. Go to the website of your destination to find out just what to expect when you get to the mountain. Of course, all ski areas have to follow state regulations as well. And in Vermont, that means all out-of-state visitors are required to quarantine for 14 days prior to arrival or for seven days with a negative COVID test. Each lodging property and base area will also be conducting contact tracing. This may make it difficult for Vermont resorts to compete with resorts in nearby states. Here's what Lindsay Delorier, president of Bolton Valley Resort, had to say recently to their community. As we experience the bumps in the road that we will experience or if things aren't quite the way you're used to, remember we're doing everything we can to keep you safe, to keep us safe, and to keep Bolton Valley here and strong so that we can keep growing. Bolton Valley has also built up their backcountry program in recent years. Backcountry skiing was already on the rise in New England with recent advancements in equipment. The pandemic has only increased the number of people looking for that off the beaten trail experience. Once again, please check with your mountain or outfitter to catch up on the latest protocols involving backcountry skiing. Wondering what is going on at Waterville Valley? Stay with us on New England Ski Journal. When we come back, we will check in at the New Hampshire Resort to find out what you can expect this winter. Hi guys, I'm Stephen from the Woodstock Inn Brewery in North Woodstock, New Hampshire, exit 32 in the White Mountains. We're gonna talk a little bit about beer. First thing is our Pig's Ear Brown Ale. That's our flagship beer. It's the first beer and recipe we ever made 25 years ago. Pig's Ear Brown Ale is delicious. It's light in flavor, dark in color. It has toffee, caramel, and chocolate notes. If you like our Pig's Ear Brown Ale, you're gonna love our Double Pig's Ear Brown Ale. It has an 8.4% ABV, so it packs a bit more of a punch. If you can't make it here to this great location, you can find our beer and retailers throughout New England. 
Just two hours from Boston, Waterville Valley is a family destination that is popular all year long. Joining us now to talk about the upcoming winter season is the Director of Marketing, Matt Hesser. Hi Matt, now what changes have you guys made in regards to the pandemic? Uh, you know, it really starts right as you come up where we have changed how people park. Uh, unfortunately, we had to forego the shuttle service that we had. Uh, and as every other resort has done in the area, your car is now your base lodge. Um, and so uh, we try to make it a little bit easier for folks to get to their car. We actually uh, are putting in ski trails that go around both sides of our parking lots to make it easier for people to access at the end of the day. We've changed how we do rentals where we try to uh, reduce how many people are inside. We have a wonderful RFID uh, monitoring system for all of our buildings so that we can track um, how many people are in each building and kind of put a pause on more people coming in if need be. Changing up the lift lines, um, really every part of our business has had to change a little bit. And how will the dining situation be different for skiers this season? Well, you know, a lot of folks are used to going into a base lodge and going into a cafeteria style and and the kind of crowded scramble where you go in to get your chicken fingers or pizza. And really what we've done is shifted everything to uh, a host led seating uh, like a like a standard restaurant would be and so you get seated by your host and then from there you can uh, make your purchase uh, online through an app um, and really just trying to reduce in-person contact as much as we can and what else is new at waterville valley we hear you guys now have night skiing yeah exactly we um, we're really wanting to try to spread people out in their skiing experience so one of the ways to do that is add more time and so we have uh, worked it out with the Forest Service and local authorities. Uh, we're currently going to add 24 nights or holidays and weekends um, where people will be able to access us at night as well. Um, and so we're still in the works of, of working in the details and setting up lights and all that kind of stuff, but we're, we're definitely looking forward to launching that this week. Are there any special deals right now for lodging and lift tickets? Uh, the biggest thing is to buy online and save uh, up to 40%. The earlier you buy, the more you save uh, when you buy at waterville.com. Um, and then for lodging, I, one of the things I'm most excited about is actually uh, kind of a create your own ski and stay where we have a flex ticket where um, instead of it being a two day consecutive ticket, it's a two of three days. So you have three days to use your two days of skiing or a three of five where you have five days to use your three days of skiing, which allows for flexibility based on weather or, you know, you get tired when you're doing a five day ski vacation. And so uh, just kind of add that extra flexibility to people. And tell us about the new family lesson program that you guys have in place. Yeah, so uh, obviously with COVID, group lessons uh, wasn't going to jive very well for us. So this family lesson, we're kind of looking at it kind of like a, a parent and taught swim lesson where the parents join the instructor and the child. And while we're teaching the child, we're also teaching the parents some of the ways that they can continue the education. Hey, here's some tips that you ought to give them and all that kind of stuff. So we're really teaching the child how to ski or ride and the parents how to continue the education after they leave the lesson. Now, Waterville Valley is basically its own town. Can you tell us about the accommodations for those coming to visit? Yeah, uh, so a lot of people don't realize that Waterville Valley Resort isn't just the uh, the mountain and the ski resort, but there's a full town with seven hotels. Um, there's uh, two hotels that are your standard hotel, but uh, more of them are actually condo hotels uh, where people have full kitchen and, and living room and bedroom and, and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, there's a lot of different options based on what people are looking for. And for those watching right now, why should a family head to Waterville Valley? The biggest thing that people to understand is that Waterville Valley isn't just a mountain. It's uh, It's got the alpine skiing that everyone loves. It's got the family feel and community that everyone loves. But it also has uh, the town with lodging and uh, an incredible Nordic system and uh, uh, dining and shopping and just a lot to do here. So. If the whole family doesn't ski or snowboard, that's awesome. We still have a lot of things that people can do to enjoy their vacation. Awesome, well, thanks, Matt. For up-to-date information on everything Waterville Valley, go to waterville.com. Next up, we head to North Conway, New Hampshire for a little shopping and to find out how you and your family can enjoy the Conway Scenic Railroad this winter. You can find just about anything you are looking for in North Conway, New Hampshire. Skiing, museums, restaurants, and shopping galore attract tens of thousands to the village every year. This summer on our New England Ski Journal Summer Escape episode, we discovered a shop that specializes in all things olive oil. 
people always ask me, uh, why did you open up an olive oil company? And uh, basically, I'm an Italian by descent. My mother's a full Italian. So food was always in our household. And I happened to be in another olive oil store and I fell in love with the olive oils. I was really amazed about the health properties. When I moved up here in North Conway, New Hampshire, I said, wow, this would be a great location to open up an olive oil store where people from all over the Northeast, all over the country, come and visit. In our first location downtown, it is strictly an olive oil store. Not only do we sell olive oils, we sell olive, we have pastas, we have rubs, we have spices. We also have a combination location down at Settlers Green that is an olive oil and a jerky store. If you were to come in our store, basically we would show you our olive oils from all over the world. They usually go from mild on this side to robust down here, all based on biophenols, which is the antioxidant in the olive oil. We take you over to our number one sellers, garlic olive oil, Tuscan herb olive oil, 18-year-old and 25-year-old balsamics, all from Modena, Italy. We have white balsamics on the back wall here, all kinds of crazy flavors. Those white balsamics will turn into dark balsamics around the corner. And then we have infused, infused olive oils like basil and mushroom and sage and a green chili pepper olive oil. People think of olive oils and vinegars as a salad dressing, but it's a lot more than that. We can marinate chicken with it. We can marinate steak. We use it as bread dip. We put it over avocado toast. Our staff is trained to teach you about how to use the oils and vinegars, not only separately, but also combined together. All their products are also available to ship at ncoliveoil.com. Come check us on out here at North Conway Olive Oil Company and we promise you, you will taste the most freshest balsamics in olive oils in the world. We will excite your imagination. New England Ski Journal is your complete source for features, tips, and insider insight on the region's ski and outdoor scene. From resorts, lodging, gear, instructions, opre, and backcountry, to summer and fall experiences, New England Ski Journal is your go-to source for fun and adventure. Subscribe today and don't miss a single issue of inspiring, informative, and insightful content. Receive all seven issues for only $34.99. Log on to SkiJournal.com forward slash subscribe to start your ski and outdoor experience today. Looking for the latest news and information on the New England ski and outdoor scene? SkiJournal.com will get you inspired and informed. With award-winning journalists and photography, SkiJournal.com can help you prepare for your next trip with insight from experts on the industry. Can't get enough of the New England high country? Check out SkiJournal.com to watch all of our past winter episodes as New England Ski Journal visits some of the best ski resorts and destinations in the region. You are looking at the Conway Scenic Railroad. The daily rail excursions travel from North Conway through the Mount Washington Valley and Crawford Notch. Many people have enjoyed this ode to the past in the summer and fall months. But did you know there are winter excursions as well? Joining us now is the Marketing and Events Manager of the Conway Scenic Railroad, Brian Solomon. Hi Brian, how's it going? It looks like you're in one of the railroad cars right now. Yeah, it's going really well. I'm up in a car we call a Ronda Lee. It's a, a 1955 built uh, Bud Vista Dome. It's a beautiful car. It's got that 1950s Art Deco look. It's all uh, glass lined. The car itself was designed and built by the Bud Company of Philadelphia, and it's it's one of the finest types of passenger cars that was built for uh, service in America, and we actually have two of these cars. How was it different this summer and fall season than it was, you know, in years past? Uh, well, we've had our challenges because of the whole COVID-19 pandemic issues. We retrained our people. We rebuilt a lot of our cars, including this one where we've got social distancing in place, but we also have dividers to give people private and secure areas. Uh, with some of our coach cars, we built compartments where traditionally it would have been open seating. Now it's compartmentalized with, with doors um, to give people greater levels of security. We did all that. And despite the pandemic and all these challenges, we actually had, I think we had a pretty good summer and a, a very good fall. And when do you stop running in the winter and start back up for the spring? 
we we used to stop right after New Year. We used to do something called Steam in the Snow, which we would be doing this year. But again, because of the pandemic, it really wasn't practical. We are going to be doing what we call Winter Steam, which is kind of a scaled back version of the same event. And that usually kind of signaled the end of our operation um, until spring. Now we'll be running pretty much weekends through January and February with the snow train. And we actually had a, a lot of our guests last winter on our first snow train say that they were absolutely delighted for the opportunity to travel on the train in the winter. They said they would come up here every winter, they'd see our railroad station, they'd see our trains, but we were never running. This year we decided for snow train to upgrade the snow train and put our first class cars on and that's where we'll be running these dome cars. And that's gonna be a real improvement. We'll be using this classy train um, to run between here and Attached five times a day, uh, weekends in January and February. Snow Train was invented by the Boston and Maine Railroad, which operated lines all over New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Vermont, Maine. They were a big deal going back. And in the 1930s, because of the Great Depression, their ridership had been in decline. And one of the things they looked to do to reinvigorate their Conway branch was to run snow trains out of Boston to basically help create the ski area that now exists here in the Mount Washington Valley. It was a railroad concept. What we've done is we've recreated the snow train. So it now, instead of running from Boston to North Conway, it runs from North Conway to the ski area at Attitash. They depart at North Conway to Attitash at nine o'clock, 11 o'clock, one o'clock, three and five. And then they return an hour after they depart. We're always looking for ways to make our railroad more relevant to our guests and to new guests and to the Mount Washington Valley as a whole. So we're looking not just to improve our business, but to make the whole railway experience in the Mount Washington Valley better for everybody. Thanks, Brian, and we look forward to a journey aboard the railroad in the future. Don't go away. Coming up next on New England Ski Journal, we check in at Maine favorite Sunday River to find out what we can expect in the months to come. Welcome back to New England Ski Journal. Winter season is here and we are finding out what's new across the region. Joining us now from Sunday River in Maine is Director of Communications, Carolyn Castaldo. Hi Carolyn, how's everything up in Maine and how has the start of ski season been? Ski season's been great. We've had some natural snow and our snowmakers have been hard at work. So we're busy with terrain expansion and getting more terrain open every day. Can you briefly explain what changes you guys have had to make due to the pandemic? Sure, so at Sunday River, um, we have installed new RFID gates, um, which was in the works pre-pandemic, but what's great about it is that it allows direct to lift access and contactless pickup of tickets. So, um, you know, our guests aren't spending as much time in a ticket line. They can buy tickets online and once they have that RFID card, they can reload it as many times as they want and go directly to Lyft. So it's a pretty seamless process and uh, we're pretty excited to have that at all of our base area lifts. A few other things that are in place. Of course, we have a mask requirement on site. So unless you're actively skiing downhill or sitting down to eat, you should be wearing a facial covering. Um, and then of course, many of the things that we've seen in everyday life now, distancing, capacity limits, um, plexiglass at point of sales. Those are really the main big changes. Um, but I think that, you know, it's, it's great to be open and people are really receiving those changes well. Sunday River has always been known for its events. Do you guys have any special events coming up in the future? Of course, with the pandemic, some of our events have been scaled back. Um, but one thing that we're really excited to be able to offer this year is fireworks every single weekend. So from Christmas to late March, actually, we'll be doing fireworks every single weekend and throughout holiday weeks. Do you have any news or plans? I know you have some building projects underway. Sure. So we launched two new real estate developments this fall. One is Merrill Hill, and it's kind of an unparalleled mountain experience when it comes to the Northeast. It's actually a chairlift serviced home development. People are definitely looking for a place to escape with their family these days. So um, that's been very popular. Our other real estate development is the Dreammaker Lodge um, condominium, which is uh, 24 units of slopeside lodging right on the Dreammaker Trail on North Peak. Though both of these projects don't allow for ski and ski out access this season, uh, it's definitely a very exciting time, especially with how fast real estate is going in our area. 
Backcountry skiing is gaining a lot of popularity right now. What kind of backcountry skiing programs do you have at Sunday River? We do allow uphill access at Sunday River from 30 minutes before lift opens until the lifts close. And of course, that's a great exercise. People are very excited to be able to skin up, earn their turns. And then we also have some great backcountry skiing right in our backyard, especially with our proximity to the White Mountains and the Presidential Range. And why should a family come to Sunday River? Families should come to Sunday River because of our variety of terrain. Whether you have kids who are learning or even adults who are learning, we have great lessons through our snow sports school. But we also have some really great advanced terrain. So it gives a little bit of something for everyone. And then of course, you know, we have spas, we have dining. You don't even have to be a skier to want to come to Sunday River for a family vacation. Awesome, well, thanks so much for joining me, Carolyn. Thank you for having me. To learn more about what's new at Sunday River, go to sundayriver.com. That's all the time we have on this episode of New England Ski Journal. To find out more about the New England ski scene, including a look at past episodes, check out skijournal.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Meredith Gorman, and I'll see you on the slopes.